souls speaking from the afterlife, dead nuns, and a priest who escaped death after crashing his motorcycle. They've all given riveting first-hand accounts of purgatory. Here's what they saw. If you're thinking purgatory is almost heaven, well, uh, not exactly. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is basically the church doctrine, defines purgatory as a purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven. Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes it as an intermediate state after death, pointing to Roman Catholic writings that claim it is a place or state of punishment. The dictionary goes on to add, Purgatory is where the souls of those who die in God's grace may make satisfaction for past sins and so become fit for heaven. The type of sin committed in one's life also affects accounts of purgatory. In Roman Catholic doctrine, venial sins are considered less severe than mortal sins, such as envy or neglecting prayer. According to accounts, however, both types of sins play a role in how one experiences purgatory. So almost heaven? More like almost hell. In November 1873, a nun allegedly spoke to a soul in purgatory. It was a nun from her covenant, Sister M.G., who had died over two years earlier. Her account is outlined in December 1967's An Unpublished Manuscript on Purgatory. The soul told the nun, In the great purgatory there are several stages. In the lowest and most painful, it is like a temporary hell. And here there are the sinners who have committed terrible crimes during life and whose deaths surprise them in that state. At this level of apparent mortal sin, she said, there are also souls who were indifferent to God. The next stage is for those who at the time of their death had venial sins or mortal sins that were forgiven, but for which they had not made entire satisfaction to the divine justice, as Sister M.G. noted. The final stage was the Purgatory of Desire, also known as the Threshold, which Sister M.G. allegedly said few people escape. The soul said to the nun, To avoid it altogether, one must ardently desire heaven and the vision of God. That is rare rarer than people think, because even pious people are afraid of God and have not therefore a sufficiently strong desire of going to heaven. Father Jose Maniangat, a Catholic priest, got into a motorcycle accident back in 1985. He survived, but claims to have experienced death and says in this time he was escorted to heaven, hell, and purgatory. On his website, his story is prefaced with a disclaimer that says the Diocese of St. Augustine investigated his claims and couldn't authenticate or endorse them. Nevertheless, he continues to tell his tale and has appeared on various podcasts doing just that. In hell, the priest claims there are seven levels of suffering, each defined by the number of mortal sins its inhabitants committed during their lives. In Purgatory 2, he says there are seven stages. He wrote on his website, The main suffering of these souls is their separation from God. Even though these souls are suffering, they enjoy peace and the knowledge that one day they will see God face to face. He said he spoke to many souls in Purgatory who asked him to pray for them and spread the word to others to do the same. The souls were waiting to enter heaven. You know, maybe, maybe we're not in hell yet. You know, maybe this is purgatory and we're on our way to be judged. In All for Jesus, or The Easy Ways of Divine Love, English theologian Frederick William Faber covers an account of purgatory that came through Sister Francesca. Though she herself never went there, she apparently spoke of a 14-year-old girl who did because she was too young at the time of her death to have conformed to the will of God. While there, one soul allegedly told her, Ah, men little think in the world how dearly they are going to pay here for faults they hardly note there. Faber pointed to this account as expressive of the nature of purgatory, writing, Wrong notions about small faults may thus lead us to neglect the dead or leave off our prayers too soon, as well as lose a lesson for ourselves. And again, both views agree as to the helplessness of the holy souls. The term holy souls refers to those in purgatory and those that the faithful offer prayers to in life. The life of Saint Gemma Galgani offers yet another account of purgatory. Galgani, also known as the Daughter of Passion, was canonized as a saint by the Catholic Church in 1940. She claimed to have spoken with a religious sister who died after suffering for a few months. Her soul allegedly appeared to Galgani full of sorrow as she suffered in purgatory. Galgani spent her next days offering prayers and petitions to God to save the sister. And in her diary from this time, she describes being visited by the soul in the form of a woman dressed in white. The soul allegedly said, I thank you so very much for the great concern you have shown me because soon I shall be able to attain my eternal happiness. The daughter of Passion claimed that after 16 days she saw Mary, the mother of Jesus, and then the sister with her guardian angel and Jesus in the same doctrine. The soul thanked her before departing. Galgani wrote, She made a sign of bidding me goodbye with her hand several times, and with Jesus and her guardian angel she flew to heaven. As for an earthly explanation of what was going on, let's start with this. Her own sister mocked her, indicating that it wasn't as divine as it appeared. The Guardian later claimed, 
She was given to displays of flamboyant suffering, to public and extreme fasting and self-denial, and the exhibition of torn and bleeding flesh. She also claimed to have experienced stigmata, that's bleeding from the hands, wrist, feet, or head, things that align with Jesus' crucifixion wounds. Specifically, St. Gemma bled from her head. Gemma is a saint, but even at the time in 1940 of her canonization, she was a controversial pick for sainthood. Modern research continues to look into her claims of purgatory and what her life really was like back then. 